Renee Godfrey was an actress and a singer who was active in Hollywood in the 40s. She attempted to make a comeback in the early 60s, but her life came to a tragic end when she died of cancer in 1964. In this video, we'll take a look at her short-lived Hollywood career and her sad ending. Early Years Godfrey was born Renee Vera Hall in New York. Her father, Emile Hall, was a Dutch diamond merchant. She found out at a very early age that she had a penchant for modeling and singing. She was 11 when she started working as a model. During her sophomore year in high school, she took night classes so she could focus on her modeling job in the morning. In the early 1930s, she was photographed by photographers like Edward Steichen, Victor Kepler, and John Hutchins, and she was often featured in magazines that were published nationally. Miss New York she traveled a lot during her early life and spent most of her time in foreign countries. She was a New York City native, but developed a French accent while living in Paris and found it hard to get rid of after she moved back to the U.S. She won the title of Miss New York in 1935. She was only 15 at the time, and her victory convinced her to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. She participated in the 1937 Miss America pageant, but failed to win the crown. She didn't let that discourage her from doing what she wanted to do, and she decided to move to London in 1939, where she sang in Danny Kaye's nightclub act, first film with RKO Pictures. While she was in London, Godfrey met actor and film director Peter Godfrey. Peter was 20 years older than Renee, but they fell in love with each other and married in 1941. They moved to the U.S. in 1940, and Renee started working for RKO Pictures as Renee Hall. Her first film was Kitty Foyle, The Natural History of a Woman, the film was directed by Sam Wood and released in 1940. Renee didn't receive billing for it. The film starred Ginger Rogers and James Craig, and it was RKO's top film for 1940. It received nominations for the Academy Award for Best Picture and Writing Adapted Screenplay. Rogers won the Academy Award for Best Actress, getting a contract with RKO. After Kitty Foyle, Godfrey continued to perform in minor film roles. She had an uncredited role in the 1941 musical Let's Make Music, and performed the role of a nurse in Citizen Kane. In 1940, RKO believed that she was going to be their next big star. She starred in the 1941 comedy drama film Unexpected Uncle, directed by Peter Godfrey. Peter Godfrey also directed Renee in his 1942 film Highways by Night. Thanks to her performance in Unexpected Uncle, she received a long-term contract with RKO in 1942, and she changed her name from Renee Hall to Renee Godfrey. During World War II, Renee and Peter performed with the United Service Organizations and organized magic shows for U.S. soldiers. Peter performed amateur magic tricks, and Renee acted as his assistant. During this time, Renee also modeled for Coca-Cola, and her photographs were displayed on their billboards. She was also a pinup model, and her photographs were in high demand in military barracks during World War II. Post-World War II Films Renee Godfrey finally started gaining some attention when she began starring in Poverty Row films. These were films that were made by low-budget studios between the years 1920 and 1950. She appeared as a second lead in the 1945 film Bedside Manor alongside Ruth Hussey. In 1946, she starred alongside Martha O'Driscoll in Down Missouri Way and Lynn Roberts in Winter Wonderland. She co-starred as Vivian Vetter in the 1946 Sherlock Holmes crime drama Terror by Night and then in the 1947 comedy French Leave. By the late 40s, her career had almost come to an end. Most films she performed in didn't try to showcase her acting skills and instead focused on her beauty. She appeared in Peter Godfrey's The Decision of Christopher Blake in 1948, but the film didn't do much to save her career and it had become obvious to Renee that she wasn't going to be RKO's next big star. Retirement and Attempts to Revive Her Hollywood Career Renee had three children with Peter, two of whom were twins. After she realized she wasn't going to be as successful as Marilyn Monroe or Rita Hayworth, she decided to focus on her children. She made several appearances on TV shows during the 50s. She had guest roles on The Loretta Young Show and Jane Wyman Presents The Fireside Theater, hosted by actresses Loretta Young and Jane Wyman, respectively. She also made appearances on shows like Perry Mason, Hazel, The Donna Reed Show, and Wagon Train. Her husband Peter had fallen ill and found it impossible to direct films in the 50s. He tried to get into the real estate industry to provide for his family, while Renee attempted to find acting work in Hollywood again. She had minor roles in the 1960 musical film Can Can and the 1962 film Tender is the Night. She appeared as Mrs. Stebbins in the 1960 film adaptation of the 1955 play Inherit the Wind, 
by Jerome Lawrence and Robert Edwin Lee. The film was directed by Stanley Kramer and featured actors like Spencer Tracy and Frederick March. The film won several nominations for Academy Awards and Golden Globe Awards. What it failed to do, however, was revive Godfrey's Hollywood career. Death After several failed attempts to bring her Hollywood career back from the dead, Renee Godfrey died of cancer on May 24, 1964. She was living in Los Angeles, California and was 44 years old at the time of her death. Before she died, Godfrey had starred in the 1965 family drama film Those Callaways. The film was produced by Walt Disney. It was released posthumously in 1965, but Godfrey didn't receive any billing. Her husband, who was also sick throughout the 50s, died in 1970. Renee and Peter are both buried at Glendale's Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery. Their three children were looked after by actress Barbara Stanwyck after the death of Renee. Barbara and Renee were close friends during the beginning of Renee's Hollywood career. One of her daughters, Bobby, was married to composer Basil Polidorus. What's your favorite Renee Godfrey film? If you could go back in time and star Godfrey as the main lead in a successful film, which one would you pick? Let us know your opinions in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.